Hello and welcome to the Seventh Day Sabbath, a Holy Impact Ministries dot com production. I'm Pastor Scott Belane. God bless you and thank you for uh, tuning in today and sharing your Sabbath with, Sabbath with us. And uh, again, thank you for keeping God's seventh day Sabbath, a day that he said would be a sign between him and his people, a perpetual agreement for all generations. And uh, once again, we just want to thank you so very much for uh, stopping by and spending some time with us. We are just... Uh, uh, here casually, there's no scripting going on here or anything like that. Uh, we are just relaxing on the Seventh Day Sabbath. For those of you who have never watched the Seventh Day Sabbath before, uh, we'd like to uh, welcome you to this uh, kind of a hangout kind of a thing that we do on the Seventh Day Sabbath. And we just pick a scripture or a topic and we just kind of go over it a little bit for better understanding uh, while we are resting and just kicking back on the seventh day sabbath many people uh today don't uh, believe in the brick and mortar church or the uh man made denominational charters that are out there and for good reason and they are now studying at home so uh we've created this uh kind of a kind of a hangout atmosphere for uh, those folks that would just like to kind of relax a little bit and uh, sit at home and uh, uh, study their Bibles and know and understand what the Word of God says in these days that we are living in. And again, these days, again, we believe are uh, uh, the end of time theater as far as the Bible is concerned. And we have many good reasons to believe that. And we talk a lot about that on our uh, sister channel, YouTube channel, uh, at called The Valaine Report. And I just wanted to mention this uh, for those of you who watch us on the Valaine Report throughout the week. We have a, uh, a broadcast that goes on uh, Monday through Thursday at about 11 o'clock, 11 a.m. We try to have everything up and running. And uh, we are having a little bit of a problem with YouTube, and there is a little bit of a discrepancy there. We had a program that we had produced uh, on Thursday. Uh, again, ran about an hour long, 45 minutes to an hour long. And YouTube would not accept it. They have kicked us down to 15-minute increments. So uh, for the time being, while this discrepancy is going on, uh, we can only uh, put out 15-minute videos, which is fine. We had gotten uh, some emails uh, from some uh, very good friends of ours uh, who are also Watchmen on the Wall, uh, Laura at the Video Chan, which is a great uh, channel to also subscribe to, had written us and, and has suggested that we did smaller 15-minute increments of the Valaine Report because a lot of people would like to share those segments, but they can't because they were too long. So we were thinking about going down to 15-minute segments uh, and breaking the news articles up that we had that were helping people to interpret the times that they live in. Uh, anyway, so, uh, you know, God opens some doors and he closes other doors. Uh, this might be a suggestion for us. So uh, it's not going to stop us from uh, putting our news and information out there, and it's not going to help us from helping people to interpret the times that they live in. And uh, we're going to keep on doing that headstrong, uh, even if we have to do it in 15-minute segments. So we have been looking at other platforms as well. Uh, to get the message out and to get these news broadcasts out, to just to let people know and understand the time, the end times that we are now living in. You know, our Messiah tells us, and we say this all the time in the book of Luke, he calls people hypocrites that did not know how to interpret the times that they were living in. He says, you can see the appearance of the, uh, the, sky, the clouds coming in and the storms coming in. He says, and you can interpret the appearance of the earth and sky. Why can you not interpret the times that you live in? He says, you hypocrites. He says, and why do you not do, judge for yourselves what is right? And that's all we're trying to do, is uh, trying to judge for ourselves what is right and, and be able to interpret the times that we are now living in. So uh, we hope you have a cup of coffee and uh, you'll join us today. We're going to be looking at a very interesting scripture today. It's going to be Philippians 3, 9. And this is used a lot of the times uh, by people who are unstudied, and just ignorant of the Word of God and what it says to try and tell people that God's laws uh, are no longer in effect. And uh, again, that is a very foolish thing to say. We have many denominations that teach this, and we just want to blow this out of the water and set the record straight as far as what the Word of God says this morning. 
So we're going we're gonna to kind of look at that this morning, and I think it's an interesting scripture, uh, and uh, uh, I think you're going to enjoy this. But at any rate, I hope you have a cup of coffee, something to drink there. <clears throat> Let's go ahead. Uh, let me see if I can pull up Eastward. I like to uh, do Eastward. Eastward is a great uh, application. It just absolutely is uh, because it lets you see what is going on uh, here as I can look at it as well. And we can kind of read it together, and that's why I kind of really like it. Okay, let's see here. All right, looks like we have our TBR third up there, but that's okay. We're not worried about that. Okay, so here's uh, Philippians 3, uh, 3, 9. And I just want to read this part right here, because this is the uh, scripture that we'll be taking a look at. Let me highlight that. Uh, here we go, in blue. Right here it says, And be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. Now, many people will try to point to this, and they will try to tell us, well, you know, here it is. See, we don't have to worry about the law. The law is nothing, and we can just, it's all been nailed to the cross, and we don't have to worry about it. And they completely misinterpret this scripture. And they will point to this over and over again. And, and there's a lot of scriptures like that. We're going to uh, start doing a series called Holy Impact. And we're going to start taking and unpacking many of these scriptures that people are bringing to us and saying, well, what about this scripture and what about that scripture? We have a lot of those people that are just so confused because of what they have been taught uh, in today's uh, modern-day version of Christianity that they don't really understand what they're reading. And we're going to help them to try to do that. So we're going to start a new series by, uh, called Holy Impact, and it's going to start tearing apart these little scriptures uh, one by one, and then repacking them, putting them back together, so that we can understand and and how one scripture relates to another scripture, and to keep everything in the proper context. It's all about context and uh, where they were, who they were talking to, uh, what the, to to really find out what the scripture was all about, and that's what we're going to do here today. So. Paul used to subscribe to the laws of the Pharisees, and we want to talk about that. Paul was a Pharisee, for those of you who don't know that. Uh, indeed, he was, and uh, he even claims that uh, he, he says uh, that he was in his writings, that he was a Pharisee, and he, he subscribed to what they call the Talmud. Now, the Talmud is the uh, oral uh, laws that was created by the Pharisees. And uh, it's, it's kind of uh, difficult to understand if you don't understand it. But what the Pharisees did, who were the pastors and the, and the big uh, the leaders of uh, the law back in those days, they created their own law, and they overwrite, wrote God's laws. And they tried to create in themselves their own brand of righteousness. So if you didn't follow the prescribed Talmud, the oral laws, even though they were taken from God's laws, they kind of exaggerated God's laws, and they built all these other things on top of God's laws, uh, which basically made a man-made system that put people under their control, you see. So it was a righteousness written by men to take control of the people. And uh, Jesus repeatedly rebuked them for doing this thing. And it's much like what uh, the Roman Catholic Church has done in Catholicism. They have overwritten written God's Sabbaths. They have changed uh, uh, the laws and the times of, uh, of God. They have instituted their own uh, holidays and myths like Easter and Christmas and uh, Valentine's Day. And all of these things they have uh, created for us. Uh, nobody really understands that that's Catholic doctrine. But if we look in our history books, we can know and understand who created the first day of the week, Sunday Sabbath. That's not anywhere in the Bible. You can't find it in the Bible. Uh, and in fact, we've talked many times about that, uh, and I don't want to get into that here. That's another whole study. We have videos at holyimpactministries.com. If you go under our Seventh-day Sabbath tab, you'll find the videos uh, that talk about whether Saturday or Sunday is the true Sabbath of God. And we have plenty of information there for you. Many people, even still after we put it out, refute it. Uh, but many more people understand it. And uh, we are very 
uh, pleased with that. You're always going to have those that are just not going to understand. You know, it tells us very clearly that the wicked will not understand. There are some people who want you to follow them. They want you to follow the man-made, the man-created righteousness. And then that's what this scripture here is all about, and we're going to unpack this and prove this to you. Uh, so there is two kinds of righteousness. There is the righteousness that is written by man and man's laws who, who, that are made to control people, okay? And then there's God's righteousness, and that comes from the law of God. And we're going to prove that out here today. Uh, let's take you over to uh, the next scripture that we have, and this is going to be at the bottom here, uh, Deuteronomy 12.32. This is God speaking. He says this, Everything that I command you, you shall be careful to do. You shall not add to it or take from it. Now, if you read this scripture, uh, all of this, I have a lot of this highlighted uh, this is about uh, when the Israelites were coming in to um, take over the land that God was giving them. And he's telling them, he says, you know, don't look at these other nations and how they worship their gods. I don't want to be worshipped that way. He says, you shall not worship the Lord your God that way. In Deuteronomy 12, 31, he tells them very clearly, I do not want to be worshipped that way. And uh, again, you can find that in... Um, where did I just see that? Here it is, Deuteronomy 12, 31, yes. Right down here at the bottom, right underneath the scripture that we just read. He says, you shall not worship the Lord your God in that way. For every abominable thing the Lord hates, they've done for their gods. They even burn their sons and their daughters in the fire to their gods. Now, many people think that, uh, well, we don't burn our sons in the fire to, their, to our gods, but we still do things that are not in line with what God says. We want to always constantly make up our own laws, our own ways, our own rules, and we don't need to do that. In fact, God tells us not to do that. He says he really clamps it down in Deuteronomy 12.32 when he says, Everything I command to you, you shall be careful to do. You shall not add to it, and you shall not uh, take away from it. And right there it is. So if God tells us not to, to be careful, okay, and not to add to or take away from, then should we be writing these other laws? Should we be overwriting his Sabbath? Should we be uh, overwriting his laws? Uh, I think not, and I think you would agree with me. Scripturally speaking, by what we are reading here, God does not want us to add to or take away from his laws. Uh, and again, that's why we have the uh, today's Pope is the representation of the Pharisees of yesterday and many of today's denominational charters. In fact, the majority, even the Protestant churches, follow after Catholic doctrine. In their first day of the week, Sunday, Sabbath, day, almost every uh, doctrine, no matter what denomination is, uh, short of a couple, uh, uh, always take the hold of the first day of the week, Sunday Sabbath, again created by man, by Catholicism. And we need to know and understand these things, because if we don't understand them and we don't know where they came from, we're just going to automatically be led astray, like so many people were led astray by the Pharisees and the scribes in Yeshua's time. Nothing has changed, my friends. King Solomon tells us there is nothing new under the sun. And uh, we can see time and time again, boy, he was absolutely right about that. So moving on, uh, I want to take us to uh, Mark 7, 1. Let's go over here to Mark 7, 1. And I want to uh, read this down uh, here through, uh, through the 13th chapter. Let's read that. It says, Now the Pharisees gathered to him, with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem. Now, this is just an example of the laws that the Pharisees have written and how Yeshua rebuked them. He says this, he says, Now the Pharisees gathered to him with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, and they saw that some of his disciples ate with the hands, with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. You see, they had a law that said that you had to wash your hands. God didn't say that. The Pharisees said that, okay? They made this up, okay? So it says, uh, for the Pharisees and the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands, holding to the tradition of the elders. Now, to tra the tradition of God or the tradition of the elders? The tradition of the elders, okay? So let's continue. And when they came from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining uh, uh, couches. And... 
the Pharisees and the scribes asked, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And Jesus then rebukes them. He says this. He says, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. And he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your own tradition. For Moses said, now this is important now, he points back to Moses. Pay attention to this. Moses, he says, is the one who has the real law. He says, For Moses said, Honor your family and uh, your father and your mother. Whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, if a man tells his father or his mother, whatever you would have gained from me is Corban, that is given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or his mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down and many such things you do. And we're going to break there just for a second. And the two scriptures in here there, that I really want you to pay attention to in this is uh, Mark 7, 9, and 10, where he, he says very clearly, he says, you made a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your own tradition. And what, he, what he's saying is your own righteousness. Okay, and he points back to Moses. He says, for Moses said, and he tells them what Moses said, Moses had the truth of the law. And then Mark 17, 13, he says, thus you're making void the word of God by your own tradition that you've handed down. And exactly, <clears throat> my friends, that's exactly what is happening with uh, all of these different uh, modern day versions of Christianity that we have today. What did God say? He said, be careful, be careful to do as I command you. And do not add to my law, and don't take away from it. And again, these these folks here, uh, these Sadducees, had indeed uh, added to his law, and were taking away from his law by adding to it, because they were getting people to obey them rather than God. And uh, this is exactly uh, what they were talking about in Philippians uh, three nine. So. I just want to kind of drag this out into the light uh, for us here just a little bit. Uh, now, I want, to, I want us to notice here, again, these, these are the main scriptures that we want to pay attention to, Mark 7, 9, and 10, and Mark 7, 13, where he points to Moses, he points back to the law of God as being the true law and away from this uh, man-made law. Okay, so uh, once again, we can know and we can understand that the Sadducees and the Pharisees were creating their own righteousness is what they were doing. And Yeshua told them, he said, in many places he rebuked them. He says, you know, you travel over land and sea to make one follower, and when you do, he's a twofold child of hell, more so than you are, because you're so lost, because you're following your own righteousness, your own branding, your own laws, and you're making void the word of God by doing this. And he's warning them, and he's trying to, to, to get their attention. Now, I want to take us over to uh, Mark 7, uh, 9, and I want us to take a look at that very quickly here. Uh, and this, again, is Mark 7 and 9. Let me see if I can find that here very quickly. Uh, Mark 7 and 9. Oh, okay, never mind. We were already through that. I'm trying to follow down through my notes and my scribblings here. And I'm just... <laughs> I'm scribbling here a little bit too much. We're going to go over to uh, Philippians 3.8 is where we want to go. Philippians 3.8. Let's go back to the browser and we'll take a look at that and we'll read down through uh, 8 through 11. He says this, he says, Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ. The righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. And so here we see again uh, Philippians 3.9. 
where Paul's or, or uh, yeah, Paul is telling us here very clearly. He says that righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but uh, that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. So again, it seems like he's kind of putting the law down, kind of like saying, you know, we don't have to pay attention to the law. But is that what he's really saying? When we really look at this and we see Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, pointing back to Moses, pointing back to the laws, pointing away from the righteousness and the man-made laws of men, uh, who is who is God or who is Yeshua upholding? Is he upholding the law or is he making the law null and void? Uh, again, our Messiah is keeping the law up. Uh, Yeshua only taught the Torah. That's all he ever taught. And he kept the Torah. We can see through his whole life, throughout the writings uh, of those who uh, have the account of Yeshua, and there are many of them, the Yeshua always kept the law. He was sinless, and he always kept the law. He was always at the feast. He was always on the Sabbath and the seventh day. Uh, he said, I didn't come to destroy them uh, or anything like that. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look at that scripture. And I just want to bring this back up to your memory. For those of you who do not remember this, this is our Messiah, and you can see that these are red-letter words. Do not think that I've come to abolish the law or the prophets. He's telling you right there. I did not come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Now, many people say that fulfill means that I have come to, because Jesus fulfilled them, we don't have to. He doesn't say that anywhere in the scriptures, my friends, nowhere, and you can't find it in the scriptures. And the next time someone tells you that, that because Jesus fulfilled something means you don't have to do it, you need to tell them, you show me where it says that. Because my Bible says that I'm supposed to follow him. If he fulfills something, I'm supposed to fulfill it. If he does it, I'm supposed to do it. If he treats someone one way, I'm supposed to treat my brother that way. Okay? It does not say anywhere in the Bible that fulfill means destroyed or do away with. Nowhere. So don't let someone fool you. And many denominations will say, because Jesus fulfilled it, that we don't have to do it. That is wrong teaching, and that is an error, and we need to know and understand you need to tell that person, show me where it says fulfilled means done away with. I don't have to do it. Where does it say that? You won't be able to get him to show it to you because it's not there. Let's continue on. He says, he clamps it down. He says, for truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one iota, not one dot, not one crossing of a T, not one dotting of an I, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, and hear this now, for I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because the scribes and the Pharisees were writing their own laws, trying to institute their own branding of righteousness, aside from the righteousness of God. What is the righteousness of God? The righteousness of God is God's laws and his commandments, and we're going to show you that, and we're going to prove that to you uh, as we continue on here. There is, uh, there is only the righteousness that comes from God that makes us righteousness, not our own righteousness, not the things that we say. You can say that the Sabbath is on a Wednesday if you want to say it's on a Wednesday, but that doesn't make it the Sabbath, my friends. A man can say what every man wants to say, but it doesn't overwrite the laws of God that still stand. And for those of us who know him and understand him, we know these things because we've studied these things, and uh, we're not going to listen to something some man says uh, that is outside of what the Word of God says. All right. So let's move on now to, uh, we're going to move on to uh, 1 John uh, 2 9. Again, it says, If you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that anyone who practiced righteousness has been born of him. So do we see that? Uh, again, let's, let me see if I can take you over there. Yep, I have it right here. Well, for Pete's sake, let's get back there. There we go. If you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who practices righteousness has been born of him. What is righteousness? Righteousness is doing the will of the Father, of, of God, 
If you're not doing the will of God, then you are not uh, righteous in his sight. You can keep the laws of man all day long, but that doesn't make you righteous. Uh, very important for us to know. In fact, let's clamp this down. Let's go over to uh, 1 John 3, 7, and I'll pull that up for you. You can take a look at it. It's, and, and let's read this, because this will really solidify what I'm trying to say. 1 John 3, 4, Any, Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. Okay, sin is lawlessness. So what is sin again? What's the definition of sin? The transgression of the law. Sin is what? Lawlessness. According to the Bible, sin is lawlessness. Not following God's laws is what sin is. So if you don't have the law, you don't have sin. Okay? You can't break one away from the other. They are joined at the hip. Sin is defined by the Bible as the transgression of the law. Okay? So let's read that again. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. So if, you, if someone continues to sin, and this is a great way to spot a wolf in sheep's clothing, if he is sinning and he is not keeping the commandments of God and he is not doing the right thing, then the truth is not in him, and we're going to, and he's a liar, and we're going to prove that to you here very soon. It says, Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. No one born, born of God makes a practice of sinning, which is, what is sinning again? Sinning is lawlessness, breaking the law. The transgression of the law is the biblical definition of sin. So, what does it say again? It says, no one born of God makes a practice of breaking the law, for God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on breaking and transgressing the law because he is born of God. Okay, do we understand that, uh, what, what he's saying here? By this, it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. So very clearly, I mean, this really sums things up. If you, if you just read the scripture and break it down, take your time with it. No one understand what he was saying. Everyone who practices sinning is breaking the law. That's the transgression of the law. The definition, the biblical definition, which is more important than any theorists or any dictionary. Uh, the definition of sin according to the Bible okay, is the transgression of the law or breaking the law. That's what sin is. And it says very clearly, it says, whoever practices righteousness is righteousness as he is righteousness. Whoever makes a practice of sinning or breaking the law is of the devil. So if you're breaking the laws of God, you are of the devil. For the devil's been sinning from the beginning. And it says very clearly, no one born of God makes a practice of sinning. So if someone is making a practice of sinning and they're continuing to sin, uh, then uh, they're, they're not of God. And we can know and understand that's a wolf in sheep's clothing, my friends. So uh, it says here, for God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep sinning because he has been born of God. He has the Holy Spirit dwelling in him. God has given him his Holy Spirit. If that truly happens to you, then you will be driven to follow, to please God, to do what is right. Many people say that God's laws are all nailed to the cross. That is nowhere found in the Bible. And there's all this argument between the moral law and the ceremonial laws and the Levitical laws that were put in the side of the pouch of the ark and the Ten Commandments that are in the middle of the ark. And all of these, uh, it's just a bunch of confusion as, uh, as to God's laws. All of God's laws are still in effect, and we need to study those laws. Now, many of God's laws we cannot keep because we need a third temple and we need uh, a priestly hierarchy, a high priest, in order to keep many of the capital punishment uh, laws and many of these different things. 
Uh, and many people don't understand. People say, well, you have to stone your children and you can't start a fire in your house on the Sabbath and you, and you can't do this and you can't do that. And blah, 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 blah. Well, they don't understand that most uh, of uh, God's laws, a large, I will say a large portion of God's laws can't be kept because there is no temple, even Passover. We remember Passover, but we cannot keep it biblically because you need a third temple and you need uh, a high priest. And of course, we don't have that right now. So God's laws, uh, I liken them to, again, like a speed limit on a road. If you go down a road and it's 35 miles an hour, that's the law, right? You need to obey that law. If you don't obey the law, then there's a penalty. Okay, there's a, there's a penalty for your actions if you break the law. But if I go down a, a road and the bridge is out, down that road. And I, does that mean that the law, that the speed limit is null and void? No, it just means that the bridge is out. I can't go down that road until the bridge is repaired. And we know that during the millennial reign, everything will be prepared. The temple will be back. It will be again in Jerusalem that we will, we will honor him and worship him. And, uh, uh, God's laws will be put back. And it tells us very clearly, he will restore all things from ancient times. So we, know, we can know and we can understand that uh, God's laws are not all done away with. Right now, with the situation that we are in, we don't have a temple, we don't have a high priest, we don't have the court system that we need uh, in order to keep a lot of God's laws. So we keep the laws that we can keep. And uh, the laws that we cannot keep, if the bridge is out, well, then you can't keep them. That's just all there is to it. And that's the way God has uh, allowed it to be for this period of time. Doesn't mean that they're null and void. Doesn't mean that they're dead. Doesn't mean that they don't mean anything. Doesn't mean they're nailed to the cross. Does not, does not mean that. What Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, came to nail to the cross was the law of sin and death. Yeshua came to uh, nail the law of sin and death. Now, what is the law of sin and death? Sin is the transgression of the law. We've already established that, correct? So, the, if sin is the transgression of the law, what was the penalty of sin? The penalty of sin was death. It was death. Uh, and you had to sacrifice an animal. There had to be blood shed for sin because God was trying to teach us uh, and God did never, never wanted there to be animal sacrifice. He did that to teach us the importance of sin. And we, that's another whole study. We can get into that. But God says very clearly, I don't, I don't want animal sacrifices. This is just something I use to teach you the important of, importance of sin. But, there, but that was the law, that their uh, death was the uh, penalty for sin. Yeshua nailed that to the cross. There is no more death penalty for sin if you uh, accept the salvation and the blood, the burial, and the resurrection of Yeshua HaMashiach. Excuse me. <coughs> I have a problem with my voice this morning. Uh, but uh, that is what he nailed to the cross. He, he nailed that penalty of sin, the law of sin and death. If you sinned, there had to be a death penalty paid for it. Yeshua was the last sacrificial lamb. He was the last the last thing that had to be killed, the last drop of blood that had to be shed, he took upon himself every sin from every person who believes on him and has been uh, baptized by both the water and the Spirit. Again, our Messiah tells us, if you're not baptized by both water and the Spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. And this is very important. Many people also preach against this as well. Okay, so let's continue here. Uh, since we've been through that one, uh, let's go to uh, 1 John 5.3, because I think this will really kind of nail things down for us a little bit. 1 John 5.3 says this, For this is the love of God. Now, I want to stop right there. What is the biblical definition of the love of God? It can be found right here in 1 John 5.3. If people say, if people ask you, what's the definition of the love of God? 1 John 5.3, right here. It says very clearly, you can't get any more clear than this, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah, is the Son of God? 
No one can overcome the world without him. No one can cease sinning or stop sinning without him. Without the infilling, without the, without the Holy Spirit of God, without putting God first in your life, what does Yeshua tell us? He says, he who loves mother or father more than me is not worthy of me. He who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. We must put him first. And this is so very important. The righteousness that we practice uh, does not earn us salvation. And I want us to know and understand that many people get this all mixed up. They say, you're being legalistic. Well, here's, here's the truth of it. The righteousness that we practice by keeping the laws of God does not earn our way uh, into heaven. And I want us to know and understand that. Uh, we practice the righteousness of God because we love God, because we have God in us. We are part of God. He is part of us. So we naturally want to find ways. We look for ways to try and please him. And we love him. We put him first. So obviously, we want to do the things of God. And it's just that simple. So the righteousness that we practice does not earn our righteousness. We practice righteousness because we love God. And that's the way it is, very clearly. And uh, what does it say in the Second Peter 3.16? Let's go check that out. Second Peter 3.16 says this. It says, as he does in all of his letters, it says he speaks of them, and, and he's talking about Paul now. Now, I just want to get to uh, Paul, because many people will use Paul, and they'll say that Paul says that the laws of God are all nailed to the cross. And Paul, it's all Paul's fault. Paul says this, and Paul says that, and Paul says the other, right? They never go to the writings of Yeshua, by the way. You'll, you, whenever you talk about the laws of God, you'll never find anyone going to the, what Yeshua said, because Yeshua tells us very clearly in Matthew 23 to follow uh, what the scribes and the Pharisees were teaching, which was the Torah, the law. He tells us very clearly to keep the law, do what they tell you, but don't do as they do, because they're not practicing what they preach. But when they're seated in the seat of Moses, in the Bema seat, do what they tell you. So, and what were they telling you? They were telling you, they were reading from the law of the Torah, when, or Torah. When they sat in the, the Bema seat, or the seat of Moses, uh, they could only recite the Torah. They couldn't add or expound upon the scriptures at all. They had to only recite from the Torah. So in Matthew 23, we find uh, our Messiah telling us very clearly to obey the Torah and to obey the laws of God. And uh, that's very clear. You can't get away from it. And no matter how much theological uh, discernment that you think you have, or how many degrees in philosophy and Aristotle and Plato and Socrates and all this other garbage that you have, you can't erase that. You cannot erase it. Our Messiah commanded us to keep Torah, the laws of God, to read it every day, to keep the seventh-day Sabbath, to keep the feast days, to do all of the things that he did and, and his apostles did. All we have to do is read their account and no one understand. But this is what Peter says about the writings of Paul, and I want you to hear this. Uh, he says this in Peter 3.16. Let me uh, go ahead. I'm going to make this all blue so you can see it because I have other things here highlighted. I don't want you to get confused here. It says, as he does in all of his letters, speaking about Paul, when he speaks of these matters, he says, there are some things in them that are hard to understand, which the ignorant and the unstable twist to their own destruction, as they do the other scriptures. So these people were for, uh, already prophesied about that they would do these things, that they would, because they were ignorant, because they were unstable, they would twist uh, to their own direction, uh, destruction the writings of Paul. Okay, He said, and he continues on, and he locks it down. He says, You therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, take care that you are not carried away with the error of lawless people and lose your own stability. How important is it to, uh, to know and understand these things? So, uh, one more scripture I want to take you to to prove that Paul did not nail or, or was not preaching that the laws of God were nailed to the cross uh, and that is this scripture right here, Romans 3.31, in the red. We can read this as Paul speaking. He says, do we overthrow the law by this faith? He says, by no means. On the contrary, we uphold the law. He makes it very clear what he's talking about. Uh, there are all kinds of laws that, that Paul was preaching about. He was talking about the law of men, the law of sin and death, uh, there are several different laws that uh, that Paul was talking about. They had this law of circumcision, and uh, we can find that in Acts 15. In fact, we did a video on explaining Acts 15 
uh, at our website, Holy Impact Ministries, go to the uh, Seventh Day Sabbath um, tab, and you'll find that on Acts 15. That whole idea was all about uh, this circumcision group coming to um, um, James, the brother of Yeshua, uh, bringing the who was the president of the Jerusalem Council. He was the head, uh, basically, of the apostles. When they had a problem, who'd they come to? They came to James. What did he say? He said very clearly that the laws of God, he said, are are not overwritten, and that's what that's what the big discrepancy was because the circumcision group was trying to say you must be circumcised uh, in order to uh, be saved. And Paul was trying to tell them, no, 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 you have to have faith first. You're putting the horse before the cart. If you just be circumcised and you think that saves you because you did that, that's legalism. That's legalism because you think that because something you have done earns you the right to the salvation of Yeshua. We, we do, there's nothing we can do that earns us the right, my friends. There is nothing that we can do on our own. It comes by the grace of God, and only by the grace of God. He gives it willingly, not because we have earned it. And they were putting the horse, the, the, uh, the, the horse before the cart. Now, does that mean you don't have to be circumcised? Does that mean you shouldn't be circumcised? No, it doesn't mean that. That's not what they said at all. James said very clearly, he said, I give you four laws. These new converts that are coming in, he says, you guys that are telling them they have to be circumcised right away, you need to stop that. You need to stop that because you're putting a yoke around their neck that they, they're not going to be able to stand to be circumcised. They will be circumcised because they will go to the churches or to the synagogues and the laws of Moses will be read to them every Sunday. So let's start them out with the easier things to, uh, to be able to understand. He says, and you know, don't eat anything that's strangled by blood and these types of things. Uh, and he gives them four very easy things that they should do if they want to come sit in the synagogues and hear the the law of Moses read. And if they want to be part of their people, they have to they have to do these four things. So James gives them four things to do, very easy things to do, and to stay away from uh, idols and all of these other kinds of things. And uh, he tells the circumcision group, he says, they're going to come to the synagogues every seventh day Sabbath. And they're on Saturday, and they're going to, to be read the law of Moses. And the, uh, the Spirit of God will lead them to be circumcised. And they will, they will do these things because the infilling of the Holy Spirit will, will make them want to be circumcised. You can't force them. It, it's kind of like saying to someone, uh, I'm going to force you to believe in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. I'm going to force you to come to church every uh, Saturday or Sunday, whichever day you, you go to. And I'm going to force you. You can't. You can't force someone to do that. You can force them to sit in a church if you want to, but you can't force them to accept the salvation. Even your own children, you can't force it upon them. They have to choose it for themselves. They have to have, be filled themselves with the Spirit of God. They have to ask for it. They have to accept that salvation. It cannot be forced upon a person. And it was the same thing with circumcision. They were trying to force it on them. And then once they were circumcised, they would say, okay, now you're saved. No, no, no. Once again, uh, we do not practice righteousness to earn our way into heaven. We practice righteousness because we love God. What's the definition of the love of God? That we keep His commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. So we need to know and understand that. And what does the Bible tell us? Uh, he says, he who, the Bible tells us very clearly in 1 John, he who says he knows him and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So we know that uh, those who do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. And we see these fellows like uh, Kenneth Copeland and all of these guys that are running back under the umbrella of uh, the uh, Catholicism. These men that have all these more degrees than a temperature and philosophy and theology and hermeneutics and all of these different things. Uh, trying to tell us uh, the exact opposite of what God is trying to tell us and what the Word of God says to us. And we need to watch for these things. If they're not keeping the seventh-day Sabbath, if they're not keeping the feast days of God, if they're not keeping the laws of God, then they're a liar, and the truth is not in them. And I didn't say that, my friends. The Bible says that. And uh, it's, it's very clear. 
I mean, we don't have to guess what the Bible says. We can know and we can understand what the Bible says because uh, we read the Bible and we know and understand very clearly. We're not uh, we're not ignorant of these things, and uh, it's uh, it's something that uh, something that we need to know and we need to understand. Because if we don't know and we don't understand these things. Uh, we are going to be lost, and we're not going to make it. If we listen to all these different men and all these uh, different things, uh, we're just not going to make it. Let me take you over to Esort. I just want to read that to you, First John 2, 3, since I mentioned it, uh, just so you know it's in here. And by this, we know that we have come to know him, if we keep his commandments. Do we see that? If we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Do we see that? He's a liar, and the truth is not in him. Again, I did not say that. Don't get mad at the messenger. Uh, I am. It's not my gospel. It's his gospel. I'm just sharing it with you. This is what the Bible says, and this is what we need to get back to. We are living in the end times. This is no time to joke around and play around with God's Word. You know, we stand, uh, many of us sit in church on the wrong day, listening to a man that we really barely know. We only see him once a week preaching out of the back half of the Bible, telling us not to read the whole book. And we think that in that 45-minute time span that we sit there, that we're Christians and we know everything we need to know about salvation. My friends, I can't tell you how dangerous that is. I cannot tell you how dangerous that is. That is ignorant and dangerous. And I don't mean that facetiously. I don't mean that to be mean I'm, I'm telling you that, to, and if it makes you angry, then good, then, then prove me wrong. Prove me wrong what I'm saying. Uh, and uh, once again, my friends, you know, not everything is easy, but the Word of God is to be used for rebu- rebuking and repro- reproving and teaching in all patience. That's what we're doing here. And I don't want to step on anybody's toes, but at the same time, I want them to know the truth. I want them to question these things, look at these things. What does the Bible say? Our flagship scripture at Holy Impact Ministries is Matthew 23. In fact, let me pull it up for you. For those of you who have never read this, and, and this is shocking for many people who've never read Look, I read this to people who, are, who have been studied, uh, who have been through seminary, and they, they just... Sounds like an old uh, Volkswagen. Uh, <laughs> let, me, let me read it to you very clearly here. It says... But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers. And call no man your father on earth, for you have one father who is in heaven. Neither be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Christ. The greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. There's nothing in here that says to kneel down to a man sitting on a golden throne and to kiss his ring. There's just nothing here. And people say, well, I don't do that. Well, how many times have you heard people that will say, you know, well, my pastor says this, and my pastor says that, and my pastor says, as soon as someone tells me, well, my pastor says, da, 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 I know they're lost. I know they're lost immediately. I, I can almost guarantee you that they're lost because they're quoting their pastor and not quoting the Word of God. And that's going to be, that's the problem. When you stand in front of God, And he says, why did you not keep my seventh day Sabbath as I commanded you to keep that I said would be a sign between me and my people, a a perpetual agreement for all generations? Why didn't you keep it? What are you going to say? Oh, well, Pastor Billy Bob said it was Sunday and I didn't know. What's God going to say? He says, he's going to say, I told you what day it was. You knew what day it was. It was in my Bible, in my book. Did you not read it? Did you not study to show yourself approved? We're not going to be able to say Pastor Scott said this or Pastor Tom said this. We need to read the Bible for ourselves. When I hear somebody says, well, Pastor so-and-so says this or so, I know they're lost. I know they're lost already because they're going by what a man says rather than what the Word of God says. Now, I know when I'm in a debate with someone and they say, look, this is what the Bible says. Now I know... Uh, I'm talking to somebody who's a brother, somebody who knows the truth. Let's take a look at what you've got. Now I, Now you've got my attention. When, when you start saying, listen, this is what the Bible says. Let's go look at this. Now you've got my attention. If you're telling me, Pastor Sue or Betty or Bob or, or 
Tombos tells you something. I, I, I don't, that's immaterial to me. It's immaterial, and it should be immaterial to you. It should be the first sign that someone does not know what they're talking about. All they're doing is regurgitating what they've been spoon-fed by some man, some Pharisee. Okay, now he may be a man of God, okay, but they don't know enough to trust the Word of God first. They're still trusting that pastor first. So many of us say, well, well, I'm not Catholic, and I don't kneel down and kiss the ring of the Pope. I don't do—oh, no, I don't. No, I don't. Well, are you, are you keeping Catholic doctrine? Are you keeping the first day of the week? Are you still uh, practicing uh, flying reindeer and magical elves and a fat man that comes out of the fire to give your children uh, gifts, uh, which is divination? Are you practicing all these things and calling it Jesus' birthday? Uh, are you, do you still have uh, Easter eggs and all of these pagan things? God says— very clearly, be careful, be careful to obey my commandments. Do not add to it and do not take from it. That's what God says. That comes from the Word of God. doesn't come from Pastor Scott. doesn't come from Pastor Mark Biltz or Jonathan Kahn or or any of these other good men who are good men to listen to, who have much of the truth, and I have tested them, so I know that they are good men, but they're still not God. I still don't make them uh, an instructor of mine, but I enjoy listening to them, and I test what they say because I know they're of God. Do you see how that works? It's okay for us to share information with each other. That's what we should be doing. But we don't call each other rabbi. We don't call each other instructors. Uh, this is These are red-letter words. Let me go back to Eastward. Do you see these red-letter words? This means everything that Yeshua said. Jesus said it is written in red-letter words for those of you who do not know this. So when I say that's red-letter words, what I'm telling you is that comes from the mouth, the breath, and the tongue of our Messiah. This is a commandment from Yeshua. He says, but you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher. He tells us, don't, don't, don't look at men like this. Don't put them on the pedestal. Because when they make a mistake, you're all going to make a mistake. He says, I've given you the law, I've given you my word, and that's what you're going to be judged by. Not by what these men say. And if you're just listening to what these men say, then you're going to be guilty of a man-made righteousness and not God's righteousness. And I don't want to be in danger of that, and I don't want you to be in danger of that either. And that means what I say, you test. Test it. Look at the Scripture and test everything. Absolutely test everything. Be a Berean. Why were the Bereans so uh, uplifted? Because they tested everything. And uh, this is so important for us to know and understand. But with all that being said, uh, that's pretty much the, all that I had as far as the teaching goes for, uh, for this uh, particular Seventh-day Sabbath. And uh, just wanted to kind of let you know what was going on. And the same thing with uh, the Valaine Report. That's still going to be there. We're going to do smaller chunks uh, of news reports. So we'll have those up there for you. Don't worry about that. Uh, that's going to continue on. Uh, while we're under this little bit of a discrepancy with YouTube, and uh, we'll get that worked out. I don't want anybody to hate YouTube or hate anything. It's just something that we kind of disagree on, uh, and uh, we're going to get that cleaned up. But until we do, we'll, we'll just we will abide like everyone else does, and uh, we will honor their wishes. Uh, it is their platform. So uh, if anything changes, we'll let you know. Not no, It's not a big deal or anything like that. But uh, with all of that being said, you can, ch you can catch us uh, 11 o'clock uh, on Monday. And we may have several different uh, reports for you. A lot of people were wanting to download the Valaine report, but they couldn't download it because we were doing our segments. They were about an hour long. And uh, people were writing in, and, and uh, uh, one of our good uh, friends, like I said, uh, Laura from uh, the, and I, I want you to, to check her channel out. It's called the, um, in fact, let me very quickly, let me dig it up here for you real quick so that you can see it. Because I want you to, uh, to see her video channel so you know who she is. Uh, she does a great job of putting uh, news and information out to help people know and understand what is coming. And she's not someone who's trying, she's, she's just like us here, she's not trying to build uh, a monolithic brick-and-mortar cathedral uh, or a mega church uh, or any of those kinds of things. The only reason that she does what she's doing 
is uh, because she wants to uh, to get the word out and to help people to be able to interpret the time that they are living in. And that's important for us to be able to do. Um, let's see here. If I can get my browser to wake up here. It doesn't seem like it wants to connect to the Internet here. Giving me a hard time. There it goes. There we go. Let me see if I can pull her up here very quickly. I'm hitting all kinds of buttons here. Sorry. <laughs> we're, st we're still trying to get all this stuff together. Uh, let me see if I can find her here. I don't think I can. I think, uh, oh, there she is. There she is. Let me go over there very quickly here and show you her YouTube channel. Here it is. Let me take you over here. And I'll have to shrink this up to get it in the page here. It's worth uh, taking the extra couple of minutes to fiddle around and get this in here because uh, it really warmed my heart when she wrote me uh, this letter trying to help us out here at the Blaine Report. <clears throat> and and uh, she said that she got uh, a lot more subscribers and she wanted to download some of the videos too. Uh, so that she could use them for, from some of the things that we were saying. So uh, I, that would just really, really warmed my heart that she would just, for no reason, just just say, hey, you know, why don't you try this or why don't you try that? Uh, and again, this is the browser. This is her uh, YouTube channel, Spiritual Warriors for Christ. And again, she's got all kinds of different videos here. Again, sounding the trumpet that we are now living in the end times and what to watch out for. She has a lot of uh, information, today's news and different things. Same thing that we do on the VelaineReport.com. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, uh, tell her uh, thank you publicly and, uh, and everybody out there. God bless you. One thing that I did want to say is I want to say this, and she makes a good point about uh, this. If you're a YouTuber and you are using uh, something like the Seventh-day Sabbath uh, to get the Word of God out, or if you're a watchman on the wall trying to help people know and understand what's going on, um, please, when you create your videos, um, if you want us to share your videos, put them under Creative Commons. Don't put them under the regular YouTube license. Uh, because if you do that, uh, we're not going to use them because we're going to think that you don't want us to use your channel. We may mention you, but we can't show, we can't share your work. Uh, so if you put uh, under Creative Commons, when you create a YouTube, make sure it says Creative Commons. That means that, that people can share it and pass it around. Uh, you'll get uh, a lot more, um, a lot more viewers and you'll get people that are reaching your message because we'll share it as a community of uh, those of us who are sounding the trumpet. We need to be able to use each other's uh, uh, soundings and, and what, we're, what, we're, what we're all seeing. Laura sees things that I don't see. She gets news information that, that I didn't see. And the same thing with our brother Stephen Ben Danoon. He has a lot of information that he is putting out. And we have other people on the, uh, that are watching on the wall. Pastor Paul Begley uh, has a lot of different news and different things out on his channel. We have... Uh, Dabu77, uh, another one, uh, just all kinds of people out there. Uh, Anita Fuentes uh, and her husband also uh, trying to get people to come. Uh, now, we don't agree with everything everybody says, uh, but when they make a report that we do agree with, you know, we want to share that with them. We do agree that Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, is the Messiah. That makes us all brothers, no matter what, the, what all the other logistics are. We are all brothers and sisters. And uh, so that binds us together. Uh, so we, even in the Hebrew roots movement, where people are, uh, God is pouring out his spirit and bringing people back to the truth of God's word, uh, they're still bickering uh, about different things. You're always going to have that. Uh, our adversary is always going to be uh, trying to pull us apart and trying to uh, make us argue about things. That's going to happen. But as Christians, we need to fight that. We need to bind together uh, the best that we can. And we need to have these open conversations and share these videos and look at each other's information so that we can learn from each other. That's what we're supposed to be doing. And we need to trust only who? In him. In him alone. Don't call anyone rabbi. Don't call anyone on earth your father. Don't call anyone on earth your instructor. He wants to be our teacher. So we need to go to the book and we need to read it. And we need to understand. And uh, when we find a man or a woman of God that's telling us the truth, then we need to listen to what they're saying and test everything, no matter who it is. Test everything. 
that is so important for us to know and to understand. So I just wanted to say thank you, Laura, for, for writing me. I, I wanted to use her as an example, as someone who cares uh, enough to to help others. I mean, that's what being a Christian is all about. The idea that, that uh, she wrote me that uh, email, and I, I haven't even responded to it yet because I've been so busy. Uh, this uh, Friday was my daughter's uh, birthday, and we had uh, teenage girls r- running around the house and jumping in and out of the pool and all these <laughs> different things. So I am frazzled. Uh, I am so glad that it is the Seventh-day Sabbath. Uh, I look forward to it, uh, and I prepare for it the day before so we can just kind of relax. But uh, that was my week this week, and uh, I just so I haven't had a chance to uh, return a lot of emails, but we will be doing that uh, tomorrow morning. I'll get after them, and I'll, I'll respond to all the emails and the things that we have gotten. But God bless you. Thank you for the emails. Thank you for your support. Thank you for uh, supporting us here at thevalainreport.com. It is such a blessing to have you and such a blessing uh, to go through these scriptures and to help folks understand uh, what these scriptures actually mean. What are the writings of Paul? The writings of Paul, let me warn you, they are difficult to understand. Even the Apostle Peter tells us they're difficult to understand. They're not. So if you're understanding them at face value and you're taking everything at face value, there's a good chance you're probably misinterpreting what Paul is talking about. And again, Holy Impact uh, is going to, we're going to have a little session called Holy Impact, and there are going to be these little 15-minute segments that's just going to tear apart one scripture at a time to explain it. What does that mean? What did Paul mean when he said that you're, you know, if you follow the law, you're under a curse? And then he turns around and he says, do we nullify the law by uh, this faith? No, we uphold the law. Well, which one is it, you know? Uh, it seems like he's preaching two doctrines. Almost seems like Paul's kind of schizophrenic uh, if you don't know how to interpret the truth about what he was writing. And that's what Peter was trying to tell us. So we'll be breaking those down with a new segment called Holy Impact. And uh, at any rate, I hope you have a great uh, Sabbath. I don't know if the sun is shining where you're at. It's shining for us today. It wasn't last weekend. Uh, it just depends on where you are, what's going on. Remember, it rains on the just and the unjust. So uh, don't feel that just because it's raining on you or you're having a bad time uh, that it's because you're an evil person. Many people uh, have that uh, mindset that, uh, in fact, that's what they told Job when, they, when Job was struck down and uh, lost his family, lost his house, lost all his rich, riches and r- lost his health and everything else. He's, what happened? His friends come along and try to tell him, you're a sinner, you're a sinner. That's why all this is happening to you. Remember, my friends, that is not the truth. If you're having problems in life, my my friends, you need to get in contact with Yeshua HaMashiach, and you will have the fruit of the Spirit, which is peace, joy, love, long-suffering. These things will be given to you no matter what is happening in your life, because you'll know. And each one of us needs to be prepared for the times that we are now living in. So check us out on thevelainreport.com if you haven't checked us out. And uh, if we don't see you again, we will see you on the next Seventh-day Sabbath. Uh, My prayer is that the grace and the peace of God would be with you and your family, and the protection of God's hand would be over you until we meet again. God bless you. Thanks for sharing uh, your time with us, and uh, we will see you next Seventh-day Sabbath. God bless, and shalom. (laughs) 